We're here in Stockholm, Sweden at the PSWC 2017 with David Braden, who is a professor of advanced drug delivery at the School of Veterinary Medicine in Dublin, Ireland. David, does working for a School of Veterinary Medicine rather than medicine or pharmacy give you a different insight into pharmacology? It does. The fact that I'm in a vet school um, makes me consider the importance of large animal models in the development of drugs both for veterinary medicine and also human medicine. So I'm particularly sensitive to the fact that we can use dogs or pigs in the development process. But the fact that I'm in a vet school at all is really on the basis that um, I had collaborations with University College Dublin scientists who were based in the vet school and they suggested that I move from industry and teach pharmacology in the vet school. So the fact that I'm in the vet school makes um, probably little difference to the kind of work that I'm doing in my research but I'm particularly cognizant of the importance of comparative physiology between species and that when we test formulations in rats and mice that they do need to progress into large animal models. Yes, and one of your major research interests in, is in the delivery of oral peptides. What kind of medicines are we talking about there and what might be in the pipeline? So we've been working on uh, medicines that are normally injected. So these are peptides like insulin or glucagon-like peptide 1 analogues or parathyroid hormone peptides. So these are old molecules which are now trying to be converted into oral formats because they're normally injected. So the issue there is can we increase their oral bioavailability, keep them stable in the, in the GI tract and boost their permeability across the wall of the gut. So what we're really trying to do is use permeation enhancers in solid dose formulations to try and safely uh, increase the amount of peptide that we can make available orally. And what kind of new formulation approaches for oral peptides are there? So at the moment we're working on some new permeation enhancers that seem to be more efficacious than the ones we've used in the past. Um, we're also working on nanotechnology. So I've just completed work for UCD in a European framework program, Transint, where we were looking at a whole range of different type of nanocarriers from across the EU to see which of them was the best in carrying peptides across the gut wall. So the more interesting ones are the ones that promote uh, uptake of nanoparticles by the gut wall and these are the ones we're pursuing more. Mm -hmm. And what other methods of improving oral absorption can be used? Okay, so in the event that the permeation enhancers and nanotechnology fail or that they don't give enough efficacy or that they're toxic, we can move on to more device-based systems. So these would include capsules that have protruding needles made out of sugars or stainless steel. And in pig work that's been done in the US, some of these models are showing that they can deliver insulin. But the issue is, what's the safety aspects in relation to these capsules with microneedles coming out of them? Thank you, David, for your time. This is Dino Grahman reporting for FIP.